Since it was installed, the steam system has been problematic. The problems included bouncing water levels, causing nuisance trips at a low water cutoff, and the boiler flooding. The owner installed a vacuum breaker because it appeared that the boiler was going into a vacuum. This eliminated the flooding boiler, but the owner noticed the vacuum breaker would fail after only a few months, and the original problems reappeared. Once the vacuum breaker was replaced, the problems disappeared. That's when I got involved. Welcome, friends, to the Boiler Room Detective Channel, where I'm your host, Ray Wolfarth. Today, we're investigating why the vacuum breakers failed so quickly and why the boiler was tripping the low water cutoff. Whether you're a seasoned professional or a new tech, understanding these mistakes can help save you time and money and ensure the boiler runs efficiently and safely. The owner contacted me and asked what could be wrong with the vacuum breakers. Are they supposed to fail that quickly? I asked him to send me pictures of the boiler piping and the chemical treatment reports. The site was a brewery, and the boiler was set for 13 to 14 PSI steam. When I reviewed the piping, the near-boiler piping seemed to be proper. Bouncing water levels inside a steam boiler can be caused by several reasons. The most common reason is if the solids are too high inside the boiler. In this case, the boiler manufacturer required less than 2,500 parts per million total dissolved solids, or TDS. The water treatment report showed a TDS reading below that. If the TDS reading is high, the owner needs to blow down the boiler more. If the TDS reading is low, the blowdown frequency should be reduced. Another common cause of boiler water bouncing is if the boiler was never cleaned or boiled out. Thread cutting oil or oil from the piping components could float on top of the boiler water. This causes fluctuating water levels and could cause a low water cutoff to trip. I was leaning toward this cause as the owner said the installing contractor did not do the boil out and the problems have been ongoing since the boiler was installed. The owner of the boiler cleaned it by using trisodium phosphate, following the manufacturer's recommendations. The bouncing went away, but the flooding remained. After one of my blog posts, the owner installed a vacuum breaker in the piping going to the steam pressure controls. As boiler maven Dan Hollihan always says, you must think like steam. The steam left the boiler header and piped to the two vessels used in brewing, the mash tun and the kettle. Each had an electric solenoid valve that would open or close the steam valve according to the temperature control in the kettles. This is where the problem occurred. Steam systems must breathe. When the solenoid valve closes, the system cannot breathe. This caused the boiler to go into a vacuum and sucked water from the boiler feed tank, flooding it. The vacuum breaker's demise was because steam zooms out of the boiler at speeds up to 50 miles an hour along with water. When that hits the vacuum breaker, it doesn't take long before it destroys it. I suggested relocating the vacuum breaker to another location, and it worked. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more expert advice and tips. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have two websites. Brewingwithsteam.com is focused on steam systems for breweries and distilleries. It includes a monthly blog about steam issues inside a brewery. My other site is FireIceHeat.com. It's my company's website and shows some of our capabilities. I've authored 12 boiler books and they're available on Amazon. My technical articles are included in many of these industry publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective, and I'll see you on the next case.